Welcome to Buckeye Turf Podcast. My name is Carl Dannerberger, Professor of Turfgrass Science at The Ohio State University. This podcast is a brief overview of worm season turf grasses. Worm season turf grasses are grouped in the two subfamilies of Gasteroidae and Panicoidae in the family Poaceae. The major worm season turf grasses covered here are zoysia grass, seashore paspalum, and kukuya grass. Bermuda grass was discussed in a separate podcast. Warm season turf grasses are adapted to the tropical and subtropical regions of the world, with zoysia grass and Bermuda grass also adapted to the warmer temperate regions. In this table, comparison between the optimum temperatures for growth of cool season turf grasses and warm season turf grasses is shown. As might be expected, the optimum temperatures for growth of a warm season or C4 grass is considerably higher. Warm season turf grasses can spread through tillering and rhizomes, which are underground stems that give rise to new daughter plants. And they also spread through stolons, which are similar to rhizomes except they are above ground stems. Bermuda grass, zoysia grass, seashore paspalum, and kukuya grass spread by both rhizomes and stolons. Cultural intensity will be a term used to describe the overall management levels of turf grasses. Intensity increases the more intense the management practices become. For example, lower mowing heights, more frequent irrigation and fertilization are examples of increasing management intensity. The cultural intensity of how a turf is managed is influenced by how it is used. For example, a green is more intensely managed than a fairway and a fairway is more intensely managed than a rough. In general, however, the warm season turf grasses discussed here are generally ranked accordingly with regard to cultural intensity. Although there are several factors in the adaptation of warm season turf grasses, shade is an important one. Warm season turf grasses do not have the shade tolerance as that of cool season turf grasses. However, there are a relative difference in tolerance. Bermuda grass, in general, is the least tolerant of the grasses discussed. The first warm season turf grass to be discussed is zoysia grass. Zoysia grass, depending on the species, is adapted to warm temperate, tropical, and subtropical environments. Zoysia japonica, known as Japanese lawn grass, has a coarse texture. However, its cold tolerance is excellent and its shade tolerance is good. Zoysia japonica is used primarily on golf course fairways. In the United States, its use is through the warmer temperate regions, like here in the transition zone of the United States. Zoysia may be found in niche areas on golf courses too, like around the banks of bunkers providing better stabilization than a cool season turf grass could provide. The light green turf surrounding the front bunker is Zoysia japonica. Given Zoysia japonica's excellent shade tolerance, it is used on shaded teas where Bermuda grass will not survive. On this tea, Zoysia grass has replaced Bermuda grass because of the shade. The circular patches, however, are caused by a disease called large patch that occurs on Zoysia in the spring and fall. During periods of cold temperatures, zoysia grass can go dormant. In this photograph, the green surrounding is zoysia grass, which is dormant. The green itself is creeping bent grass. Zoysia mantrella, known as manila grass, is a finer textured zoysia grass compared to zoysia japonica. Compared to zoysia japonica, zoysia mantrella is slower to establish and not as cold tolerant. It is widely used on golf courses in Japan on tees, fairways, and roughs. Zoysia matrella is also used for summer putting greens. The putting green in the distance is creeping bent grass, while the green closer to the tee is zoysia matrella, located over in the right-hand portion of this photograph. 
As a green, it is inferior in quality compared to Bermuda grass because it is puffy in nature and is very has very slow green speed due to the stiff upright leaves or reduced ball roll. Zoysia matrella can go dormant once temperatures become cool and in this case winter temperatures in many parts of Japan cause zoysia grass to go dormant. Under fairway conditions zoysia grass is maintained between one half and three quarters of an inch height of cut. Mowing height should be as close to one half inch as possible and it would be suggested to mow with a heavier mower unit due to the puffiness that can occur with this turf. Fertilization levels are generally moderate. Maintained under rough conditions, zoysia grass height of cut is between one and two inches with minimal nitrogen applications during the year. An interesting situation occurs on golf courses that have creeping bent grass greens and zoysia grass approaches. Creeping bent grass can encroach into the zoysia grass. From a fertilization perspective, do not overlap green fertilization into the collars or short approaches. The higher nitrogen favors the creeping bent grass. In this photograph, the greener color to the zoysia grass to the outside of the white line is due to the green dye being applied. A turf grass species that is attracting considerable attention is Paspalum vagantum or seashore Paspalum. Its outstanding feature or characteristic is high salt tolerance. In the tropical and subtropical areas where water quality issues are a concern, seashore paspalum is being strongly considered. Seashore paspalum is used on tees and fairways and forms a dense, tight turf, and actually providing a very excellent playing surface. Seashore paspalum is also used on greens. Besides its salt tolerance, it retains a dark green color later into the fall than Bermuda grass. In this photograph, the green portion of the fairway to the right is seashore paspalum, and to the left is tiffway or 419 Bermuda grass. The adaptability of seashore paspalum to various mowing heights is similar to Bermuda grass. In various tests or trials, seashore paspalum has survived mowing heights as low as an eighth of an inch. In general, nitrogen rates are half of those used on Bermuda grass. Seashore paspalum should not be over fertilized because it might lead to its decline. Seashore paspalum is an aggressive growing and thatch producing turf grass. Practice that help reduce or manage thatch, including coring, and top dressing is required or needed to maintain a high quality seashore paspalum turf. There are a number of pests associated with seashore paspalum. The major weed problem is Bermuda grass. There are no herbicides at the current time that selectively remove Bermuda grass from seashore paspalum. Results from covering Bermuda grass with salt to kill or reduce its competitiveness have been marginal at best. It appears hand spraying a salt solution onto the Bermuda grass patches may be more effective than granular salt applications. The last warm season turf grass to be covered is Kikuya grass. In the United States, Kikuya grass is restricted primarily to Southern California area. However, in areas of Africa, Australia, and Central America, where the climates are relatively dry, Kikuya grass is a primary golf course fairway turf. This is a Kikuya grass fairway in Western Australia. The shade tolerance of Kikuya grass is good. Kikuya grass fairways are widespread and is widely found on golf course fairways in South Africa. Here it is in, in Southern Africa along the Indian Ocean as in the case on this South African golf course too. Kikuya grass forms a dense fairway turf. Thatch management is critical because under close mowing the Kikuya grass can become quite puffy. Kikuya grass can tolerate low mowing heights below a half an inch. Nitrogen fertilization rates are generally minimal. This concludes this brief overview of a selected group of warm season turf grasses.